Hello my friends, welcome back to Sanctioneering and Fluid Mechanics. In the last video we derived the continuity equation and I was going to derive the general form of the continuity equation but I'm going to save it for the next video. Because in this video we're going to be doing a review of some multivariable. I won't be doing any proofs but I'm giving you a cheat sheet of everything that you're going to need, everything you're going to need for um, for deriving the general form of the continuity equation, and we'll see these definitions again when we do Navier-Stokes. And if you just need a review of multivariable for any other class, then uh, this might be all right for y'all. So real quick for the mass balance, remember we define the mass balance to be the accumulation. When in doubt, accumulation equals n minus out. And you're gonna be adding up all the flow rates coming in and subtract all the flow rates coming out. And some general equations such as mass flow rate we derive to be density times area times the velocity. So this is volume and this is velocity. Careful with your, your little v's. And volume for, say, a pipe, a box, is going to be the cross-sectional area times the displacement of the fluid going through that pipe. Now, some definitions you may recall if you've taken uh, multivariable algebra, uh, multivariable calculus, rather, or, or linear algebra. And so we have the del operator. The del operator is a vector quantity that acts on something else. The del operator can act on a vector quantity to give you different things. So for example, uh, let's say we have a vector, say a vector v, and it's going to have an x component, it's going to have an x component, a y component, and a z component. Okay. This could be a vector, it could be velocity. Oh, careful with defining your vectors versus your scalars. What about temperature? Is that a vector or a scalar? We'll see it in heat transfer. Um, and so you can write it using vector notation, which can also be written as this, where you write the x component with an x hat, and you write the addition, and the y component with a y hat, the addition, z component with a z hat. You'll notice that a lot of the times you're doing, you're writing the same thing three times, you're just changing from X, Y, and Z. And essentially what that's doing, what I tell myself that's kind of doing in my mind, I tell myself that we're going from one dimension to three dimensions. So one dimension is just X, two, two dimensions it's X and Y, and three dimensions it's X, Y, and Z. And so a vector can be written as this. So these are the exact same things, just written two different ways. So what the del operator says is, you're gonna take the partial derivative of just this unit vector. So these guys, the hats. Anything with the hat, that's going to be a unit vector. These are unit vectors. Unit vectors. So just by definition, this is the definition of the del operator. It's just the partial with respect to x in the x direction, partial with respect to y in the y direction, partial with respect to z in the z direction. Now, how do you know if this is a vector or scalar? Well, see, one way is to see whether it has the same form as this uh, notation. And in this case, it does because it has the x hats and they're adding the x hat, y hat, and the z hat. So the del operator is a vector. And so we can use the del operator to define other things. For example, the gradient. So the gradient is you're taking the vector and you're operating it on another vector that we define to be something like this. You take the partial with respect to x in the x direction, add it with the partial with respect to y in the y direction, and the partial with respect to z in the z direction. And is this a vector or a scalar? This is also a vector because, again, it has the same notation as this. You're adding the x hat, y hat, and z hat. Now for the divergence, you may recall that you're taking the dot product of the del operator with some other vector. So del dot some other vector is going to be the partial derivative in that direction plus the partial derivative in that other direction plus the partial derivative in that other direction. So this is the overall vector and this is just the component in that direction. Okay? So careful with that notation. See how this is the overall vector and here it's just the t and the x direction. Here again is the overall vector, and here is just the t in the y direction. The overall vector, just the t in the z direction. Okay. So the gradient, again, you're taking the partial 
with respect to the whole vector, all of t, and in divergence, you're taking only the components in each direction. So therefore, divergence is a scalar because these don't have the vector components. This is just one scalar quantity. So that's kind of interesting. And lastly, the curl. Now the curl is you're taking the cross product. Cross product. So you're crossing the del operator with some other vector. And to take the cross product, remember these guys, you take in multivariable or linear uh, <clears throat> algebra, multivariable calculus. So using these definitions of the del operator, the gradient divergence curl, we can use them to define other things, such as flux, maybe? Mm. So that's it for this video. Uh, I know I didn't go too in depth with the mathematics, but this is going to be our little cheat sheet that we can use to derive the general form of the continuity equation. Click here to check out the playlist. Don't forget to share this with your friends, family, and your dog.